Hey everyone. So in this video, we're going to be going over connecting to your Workspace API. And to kick that off, one thing that I would like to do is remind everyone that GraphQL is no different than an HTTP POST request. After we get past a little demonstration, which is connecting to our workspace through a curl command, then we'll jump in to actually writing JavaScript scripts that communicate with our API. Let's jump right to it. So first off, here is the quick demonstration. So right here in a text editor, I wrote out a curl command, which sends a post request to a workspace endpoint that I've defined. And in here, we're just saying that the application or the content type is application JSON. We are actually creating a authorization header, which is passed in an environment variable to authenticate our request. And then we're adding this query or this string as the data for our post request. And if you look at this, you can see it has a query key and then a GraphQL query that we've written out, which is getting all the to-do items and their descriptions. So if we take this and post it into our terminal and run it, we can see that sure enough, we just created, executed a GraphQL call using a curl command. So keep this in mind whenever you're looking at different ways of executing or running GraphQL queries. At the end of the day, all that's happening in the background is a post request is getting sent to a GraphQL API. Now let's jump into actually writing scripts or using JavaScript to run queries, mutations, and anything else that we might need to do with our GraphQL API. To get going, what I'm going to do is close out of this. Don't save it. Excellent. Clear my screen and then move into my code directory. We're going to create a new folder right now, which is going to be called GraphQL Connections Demo. OK, so <laughs> let's move into that. GraphQL demo. And inside here, we're going to init a new NPM uh, package. And so let's use NPM init. And this is because we're going to have to require uh, a few different dependencies, or we're going to want to require a few different dependencies for helping us run those queries. So NPM init. And we can just accept all the default for the uh, package.json file. And once that is created, cool, let's just create a new file called index.js. This is where, we're gonna, where we are going to write our JavaScript. And all we're going to do right now is install one package, which is npm install uh, graphql request dash dash, and then we're just going to save it to our package.json file. Cool. That went really fast. And now what we can do is we can run a sub pull or just open this directory up in your preferred text editor. I'm using Sublime. So now here in our script, we're going to start writing out or we're going to start by requiring the module within the GraphQL request package that we required. So we don't have Babel or anything like that set up. So what we're just going to do is use good old fashioned JavaScript require to uh, get that get that module into our script. So let's say const and we'll just call it GQL. Uh, oh, actually, one second, I have to open the index.js file. Cool. So if we said const GQL client, that's just the name that we're giving it. And we're going to set that to require the GraphQL request library and from that get back the GraphQL client module. Cool. So this module right here is going to help us uh, run our requests by setting up a client with which we can communicate to our API. And to do that, what we need to do then is we need to make sure that we have a few things. Firstly, we're going to make sure we have our endpoint, right? And so the endpoint is something that every 8-based workspace is assigned. Uh, it's assigned a unique endpoint that you can use to communicate with your API. And so if we shoot over to our 8-base workspace, we can see that here in the data we have the endpoint here, and we can just copy that. However, you can get it in many places in the workspace, so wherever is best for you. So cool, I'm just going to add that workspace URL right here. And then what we're going to do is start by creating a new instance of GraphQL client. 
Actually, one thing that I forgot to mention, before we create the GraphQL client, we're going to hop back to our workspace and actually generate a uh, API token to authenticate our requests. Uh, if it was an open API, meaning that you gave public access to it, you wouldn't need to do this step. But most of the time we are doing uh, secure requests between the API, so we might as well go over it. So if I go to settings and I go to API tokens, I can add a new API token. I'm going to call this one delete immediately. And then you can assign the role or the rights that the, uh, that the token has. So I'm just going to say that this token uh, has administrative privileges for any request that it's making. Cool. So I'm going to copy that token. And now if I go back into my script, I can just say add this token here, const token and add that. Okay, so now we're gonna create a new instance of our, or a new client that we can use. So to create our client, first what we're gonna do is we're gonna assign it, where it's gonna be a constant, so we'll just name this client, and then we're gonna create a new GQL client. This is the name that we gave it, and the first argument we're gonna give it is our endpoint. This is where it's going to send our, the request to. And then the second argument that we're going to give it is options, one of those being headers, which we can give a default header of authorization. And this will be our bearer token. And so then if we do bearer and pass in our API token as the bearer token, uh, this, will, this will authenticate our requests using the token that we generated. If this was, let's say you're building an application, there was a logged in user, the ID token would be the token that you pass it, and then everything would be scoped to that user, right? So this is just the simple way that we use bearer tokens to authenticate requests between the application that is requesting information or sending information to the API so that the API know, knows who is performing those requests. So cool, let's now actually write out a query to use this client. The query that you write will obviously really depend on the workspace that you set up as these things are dependent on the data model that your workspace has. However, since we have a workspace or we're handling a workspace right now that is for to-dos, it has boards and to-dos that are related to boards, we're just going to use that domain for the sake of these examples. So first off, let's just create a query that lists out all the boards that we have. So if we type out... Uh, boards query and then we create our GraphQL query which is going to be a query and then we want a boards list and for each board we actually first want to know the count and then for each board that we get back we want the ID and the name of that board cool so that query will work for us next what we can do is then we're going to create a asynchronous function so let's just say, call this exec, and we're gonna pass it a, uh, or it's gonna equal a async function that is, has a block, cool. And here what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our client and we're gonna run request on the client, giving it our boards query, all right? And so if we await that response and assign it, to a variable called resp. We can then, once it's done, console log out the result. Cool, so let's open up our terminal and run this and see what we get back. Actually, quick thing before we do that, we have to make sure it actually runs. So just let's execute the function at the end of our file. Cool, now this is good. So I readjusted my screens a little bit so that my terminal and text editor are side by side. And so, like I said, now if we run node index.js so that we execute this file, we can see that we give it a minute and cool, it console logged out our response, which is a boards list. We have two boards and both of those are objects that are being stringified as seen for the terminal output. All right, so right now we're able to successfully uh, run a request that's authenticated. However, as you can see that this is just a really static request right here meaning that uh, no variables or anything are being passed to it. So what if this was a mutation for creating a new board and we wanted to run board create, which obviously needed to accept a data argument 
with the board's data, which would be a name. And then in response, we only would want back the ID where it created and the name. How do we get a variable name here? So what we can do is we on our mutation, we can define the arguments that accepts. So for example, this accepts name of type string and it's required. And then right here, we give it that variable so that that gets injected. But wait, still, <laughs> how do we get the variable there? Well, it's pretty simple. So right here, we're going to create, we're going to rename this to board create mutation. Let's copy that. Let's give that to our request that we have here. And then let's say that this takes a variable called name. All right. And so then in here, let's name our board my newest board. So that's the argument that we're passing to our function. And so then right here, what we can do is that's the second argument. We get to pass it the uh, name since it's a variable. Right? And so this is just, if you're not familiar with the syntax, this is short for the same thing as if we did name, name, but it just cr uh, creates the object as needed. So cool, so now what we have is we have our new mutation, which is board create. It takes an argument type string called name, and we're passing it that variable as the second um, argument to our request. All right, so let's run this now, or let's save it, and now let's run this. Cool. And boom, it created our board, gave it an ID, and the name the board, or returned the board's name, my newest board. All right, I hope that this gives you a really good idea of how you can get started uh, writing scripts that communicate with your API in JavaScript. In future videos, we can do this in any language, Python, Ruby, even more curl command examples. However, remember that once again, under the hood, all of GraphQL request is is a post request that sends the query as the post request data to your API, which then interprets it and sends back the information that you are requesting. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments of this video, as well as check out any links that I'm adding to the description of the video for further learning about connecting to your API. Hope you have a great rest of your day and thanks for watching.